What's up everybody? Welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we got the Amius guide. I'm going to give you guys one way to kill this boss. I'm going to call this the Amius rotation. Now there's more than one way to kill somebody. You don't always have to do it the exact same way. And sometimes there's exotic builds that can do things a certain kind of way if you have certain champs. But today we're going to talk about it's a really common basic way to beat this boss that most people should be able to do as long as you have the champions and the gear. So it really doesn't matter about the artifact sets you use. What happens is you really need certain stat thresholds. So as long as you guys meet those stat thresholds, you're going to be okay. We'll talk about those in a second. We'll talk about some things. Some of the stuff we're going to talk about is optional. So consider that. Keep that in mind that, you know, you don't have to do everything that we're going to talk about. But a lot of stuff is either going to either be more beneficial for you or sometimes in your case, maybe even less beneficial for you. Like, for example, if we bring heal reduction... That's great, the boss won't heal, but it might actually be a little bit worse for your team, depending on what kind of damage you do. If you brought more damage to compensate for the lack of the heal reduction, you can actually probably overpower it. So again, there's more than one way to kill the boss. This is going to be one very specific way. Let's go over a couple baseline things here real fast. First and foremost, we're going to bring one champion with heal reduction. Again, I just talked about why that's optional. Now we're going to bring another champion with block debuffs buff. That's another optional thing. For example, let's say you have Tahana Rack. She goes first before everyone else in your team. You don't need to have a block debuffs buffer. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, you have to have one champion to cleanse debuffs. Again, optional because you can get away with uh, not doing it. Bring at least one healer. I, I don't think that one's so much optional. You're going to take damage and you're going to need to heal it back some way, one way or another. Bring someone to give your team dummy buffs. Dummy buffs are buffs you're going to want flipped. And it's going to be flipped into a debuff on you. And you're going to want people that bring certain kinds of buffs. Buffs like you don't want to bring Strengthen at that time as a flippable dummy buff because it's going to turn into Weaken. Or Increased Defense turns into Decreased Defense. We'll take extra damage. You don't want that. Okay, you're going to want to bring as many champions as you can with HP Burn, Poison, Bombs, Pure raw damage works as well. And then if you can, let's find one person, again optional, with brimstone. Now, damage-wise, it doesn't really matter so much about the damage. You could really go all day. As long as you can get through the rotation through one cycle, you can do two, three, four, five, and whittle the boss down. You don't have to do it in big chunks. It could be a slow fight. It could be a really fast fight. It really just depends on your champions, the gear, and what kind of uh, damage you're doing. So if you bring more damage dealers, expect a faster fight. If you bring less, expect a slower fight. You bring all support champions, all you know champions that are tanky or revivers or healers, and you can still win. So it, it really doesn't really matter so much about that. Let's talk about how you have at least one or two champions that can mitigate like your team's damage in some way. Like for example, Taunt is a really great buff to have in this fight. Green Warden Ruark is one of the best champions I've come across as a tanky buff champion in this fight. He can buff himself. He gets super tanky. He doesn't take much damage at all. Now, the last thing is I like to have at least one person that has a decrease attack debuff. Now, there's Mighty Echo, for example, who has that on his A1. That's extremely beneficial because you can have it on over and over and over throughout the fight. There's people like Green Warden Ruark who have it on A2. You can cast that throughout the rotation once or twice, depending on you know how bold and how fast you are, uh, how much turn meter boosting you have, stuff like that. What you want to have is at least again we're going to go over one heal reduction, one block buffs, one block debuffs buffer. You need one person to strip buffs. We didn't talk about that yet, but yeah, one person to strip buffs or just reduce buff timer until the buff comes off, like. Uh, Arbiter does that for one turn, but you have someone like Timmet the Fool who does that for three turns. Timmet the Fool can do that. Works very well. He works amazing for this fight. Um, you're going to have to build your champions. In my opinion, you don't have to do this. Like It's optional as well. I've had uh, very slow champions like UDK, for example. I had Super Slow and Stone Skin Arena set. Uh, he worked out just fine. But for the most part, you're going to want your champions around 250 speed uh, over or less with someone to turn meter boost them up. And then you can get away with some champions being like 200 speed. I, you know, I've done that before too. It's a little bit optional, but some of them I would say aren't so optional. 
like your block debuffs buffer you want to go first before the boss goes put that buff on you know you're going to be over 250 speed to do that so make sure you uh, act accordingly uh, accuracy wise you're going to want 450 plus accuracy and you can get away with less and you can definitely get away with less if you have an aura like mithral is a great aura for that uh, you can definitely do a lot less than that and still land those debuffs but you're going to want to land the heal reduction if you bring a team like that especially if it's a, a more tankier team and a less damagey team because you know the fight's going to be slow you don't want them healing up you're going to want to land the brimstone but you happen to bring someone who can cast brimstone so you got to get the accuracy up for that as well. The other thing is you want very, very high health on your champions. It doesn't matter which champion it is, high health unless they're not taking hits. Um, like Green Warden Ruark can take the A1 on the alternate form. That's a very beneficial you know, thing to do. Uh, that makes it so no one else is taking the hit. That way they don't have to be as tanky. They still do need to be tanky though because they got to survive the AoEs. And if they don't do that, I mean, if anyone dies, it's not going to be the end of the, the fight. But it is going to make it a little more dramatic, right? You're going to have to do a little more extra. So you can bring Reviver, but for the most part, I'm going to say the goal is to not die. We don't want to die. We're not going to bring people to die in this fight. If you have higher blessings, you can use uh, more defense. That helps out. Um, Green Warden Ruark has five-star blessing at the moment. He'll have strengthen, increase defense, and sometimes decrease attack. He basically takes no damage from the boss, and that's on hard mode. All right, let's go over the builds real fast. I'm just going to show you guys their uh, actual build and stats. Super, super fast because I want to take off some of the gear and put it on someone else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to change some of the, the builds out. Uh, we got to get ready for the next rotation. This is uh, Green Warden Ruark. We have 76,000 HP, 5,000 defense, 259 speed. These are the stats that really matter. 459 accuracy, 329 resistance. If you can get their resistance up high enough, which is... Pretty difficult to do, especially if you have their uh, accuracy up, uh, go for it. But if not, no big deal. Uh, you can definitely get by the fight without it. Arbiter. Now, Arbiter is super slow. I changed the gear out just for this fight because what I wanted was more accuracy. I wanted to land the weekend. My Arbiter for the arena is much faster, but it uses or she uses uh, different gear. And the accuracy is significantly lower. So I had to up the accuracy a bit. Sithalia. Interesting thing about Sithalia really fast. Let me check her stats out. 65,000, 2,600 defense, 249 speed, 456 accuracy. Is She is in the video performing, but we don't have her booked up. So has a 75% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies, then decreases the turn meters of all enemies by 10% and fills the turn meters of all allies by 10%. Needs to be booked up to land 100% of the time. But in this video, we still did this fight without that booked up. It still worked out just fine. So keep in mind, things don't have to be perfect to still work. Uh, let me talk about some other champions here real fast. Timit the Fool, for example. This guy is absolutely amazing with his A2. Decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by three turns. Got that one booked up. Really nice. Don't necessarily need it booked up, but still really nice. King Galakobar is another one. His uh, A2 can remove all buffs. This one does need books, so Timmits don't, his does, at least to be 100%. And then it, it can change those buffs into poison debuffs, which is really, really nice, right? Okay, so let's go over, check out Raka real fast. Now, unfortunately for this video right here, this wasn't the gear that was on Raka for the fight. I actually um, swapped out most of Raka's gear over to uh, White Queen. And Korra. Since there was a bit of a time lapse between the two different videos, the audio recording now and the video from before. Pretty nice gear. He probably was a little bit faster and maybe had a little bit less HPs, but for the most part, it's it's kind of similar. Okay, it's like it's on it's on the same level. Hundred thousand HPs, twenty five hundred defense, two hundred eighty speed, more or less, three hundred and one resistance. So she's my block debuffs buffer for this fight, and then we got to go down to. The rares for Scion, who is your basically your introduction to heal reduction, right? <laughs> guy is a, uh, a funny champion. When he first came out, I said, man, I will never use this guy. That's a fact. Like, I will never use this guy for anything. And then all of a sudden, they come out with Amius, you know, fight, the boss fight. He's perfect for it. He's got the heal reduction on the A2. 
He's got the dummy buffs on the A3 with the increased attack and increased crit damage. You like these types of buffs for the dummy buffs because when they flip them to decrease attack, like it really don't matter. <laughs> You're not doing a whole lot of damage with the attacks anyways, like no big deal. It's not that big of a deal at all. Got a lot of options here, but this is basically going to be the team that we're using for the fight, for the demonstration for this video. Let's go ahead and get into it real fast. Here we go. All right, we got our team figured out. We got the stats good. We got the advantage. We got the first turn. Everything's looking all right. Okay, for the most part, we're using A1s here besides the block, debuffs, buff, and decrease attack. Other than Arbiter's A3, because it has turn meter boost. Turn meter boost is okay. We'll be going and using that, no problem. Block, debuffs, buff from Raka is going to be ideal here. Decrease attack. We need that to land from Green Warden Ruark. Now, for the most part, Sion is here for the heal reduction and uh, his A3 with the increase crit damage, increase attack buffs. We got Sathalia here. Hopefully she can land HP burn. She did not. All right, Sathalia is here to strip off that buff right there. We could do that with Arbiter's A2, but we really don't need to. Let's go ahead and try to get the weaken on. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and use A1 from Raka. Go ahead and use A1 from Green Warden. Get the heal reduction on is the next crucial part of the step here for this step on his turn. Go ahead and try to strip off these buffs. Perfect. A1 again. All right, everyone's looking good, looking good. Okay, at this point, we could put on the shield. Now that increase attack buff right there is what we need to get the boss to flip his um, A3 here on the next turn once he does his change of forms. But at the moment, we are okay using it for a shield. Go ahead and use the A1. Let's use the A3 again. Turn meter boost is good, like I said. Did we get the HP burn on? We did not. Those, the more HP burns on we get, the more damage we'll be doing, the better. We get the weaken on. Now we can use the A2 here. Not going to this time. Maybe next time I'll, I'm going to come back around, I will. Now, if there's enough time, like if, if the turn meter was over here at the very beginning for the boss, I wouldn't use the A3 because he'll cycle back through a turn. But since he's uh, 50 or more, we can be safe Rest assured that the boss is going to get a turn before Scion will. So that's good. Let's go ahead and use A1. Got the HP burn on this time. Perfect. All right. Let's use A1 again. Okay. Boss is going to use A3. Then he's going to roll into the A2 because everyone's asleep. Perfect. All right. What we want to do here is get Green Warden Ruark's A3 on so he can take the next hit. Use some A1s. Now, Sathalia can use A2 to cleanse the debuffs and heal. Perfect. Then Raka can use her A2 to cleanse and shield. Let's go ahead and use the A3, heal up a little bit more. And since Green Warden Ruark was able to cycle back through his turn, he can actually use his A2 now, put the decrease attack on, and he'll take practically no damage. There we go. Perfect. He's a, he's a great tank for this fight. We'll go ahead and keep rolling with the A1s. Looking for HP burns. Fishing for as many of those as possible now. Boss has one turn left. We've got to get that block debuffs buff back on. All right. And we also got to get that decrease attack debuff back on. Even get weakened. Perfect. And one more HP burn would not hurt. All right, boss flipped the buffs. Go ahead and strip the buffs. Perfect. Now, I want Sion to get the turn here. He probably will anyways. Let's go ahead and turn meter boost just to make sure he does. Get the heal reduction on. And again, you're going to have to, like, finesse those speeds to make sure that you're at least in the right spots. And if you're not, you have to turn meter boost to get in them. HP burn, hopefully. Nope. We have no luck with the HP burn this round. That's all right. Boss has two turns. It's okay to get these buffs on. I'm going to go ahead and use a decrease attack. 
No big deal. It'll cycle back through for when we need it later. Boss still has two turns left here, so we're still looking good there. It comes to that decrease attack there. Get the HP burn on. Nope. A really bad luck with the HP burn on this time. No big deal, though. It's not that big of a deal. All right, got Brimstone. Perfect. Okay, we're safe to use Scions A3 here. Boss has one more turn left. Nice. All right. That's going to work out real nice. Okay, we're forcing the boss to use A3 once he transitions. Go to A1. To A2. Everybody's alive. Looking good. Let's go ahead and turn meter boost. Green Warden Ruart can use his A3 now. Can use A1. Strip off the buffs here, cleanse, and then heal. Now, I'm going to leave that one on right there, because he's going to transfer that with his A1. Go ahead and see if we get the weekend. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and use the decrease attack for now. Nice, got the HP burn on. Okay, now is where we need to block debuffs buff again. We don't want to get stunned. All right, now we're going to transfer that one over. Perfect. Okay. Heal reduction. Perfect. Rip the buffs off. Ooh. Uh, you know, um, I don't think my uh, Sethalia is 100% booked. So, let's go ahead and use Arbiter's A2. Take one turn off of those. Alright, no big deal. Survived the hits. So that's definitely going to throw a little monkey wrench in things because he is going to start hitting really hard. Unless we do something like that. Perfect, perfect. As long as we survive the hits, that's all that really matters. And we can always uh, bring ourselves back up to where we need to be at. Let's go ahead and use the turn meter boost there. Okay, we're good for Scions A3. A1 Weaken. All right, A3 into A2. Perfect. Still looking good. All right, going to cleanse with the A2. Turn meter boost. HP burn, hopefully. Nope. A3 for Green Warden. Tank that hit. All right, one more turn before we use block debuffs. A1 weaken. Perfect. All right, we can heal up here. No problem. Now we need to put on the decrease attack debuff. Need to block debuffs buff again. There we go, A1 Weaken. All right, strip the buffs off. Heal Reduction. They're not doing enough damage with the damage dealers. Like, we don't have someone like a Turvold or someone to do, like, raw damage. We don't have a lot of uh, HP burns and brimstones landing. So I wish we had a little bit more that HP burn brimstone damage, but that's all right. Go ahead and throw on the A2, get a little shield power. Gonna use A1. Brimstone, nice. 
All right. Um, going to use A1. Use silence A3 again. A1. A1. Got the HP burn on again. A3 into A2. Still looking good. All right, if we can land a brimstone, not this turn, but the next turn, we'll be looking really good. Let's go ahead and uh, use Arbiter's A3. Let's go ahead and heal up. Let's use Green Warden's A3. A1. A1 again. Go ahead and turn meter boost again. All right, go ahead and use the A2. Time for block debuffs buff. Put on the weekend. Got the HP burn on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The HP burn was the wrong move. Oh man, I thought the H I thought it would man, I thought he would flip forms and die, not uh die then come back. Alright, let's go ahead and use the A2. That was really, really, really bad timing. Alright. Um we got the decrease attack on, so what's gonna happen now is he's gonna use his A3. Go ahead and A1. Give me the HP burn, baby. The brimstone. Fortunately, Sathalia got stunned there. We got to get the cleanse on. Go ahead and use A2. Ooh. That was not good. All right, let's bring him back to life. A3. We have no choice but to use our A2. Our A3 into A2. We're back where we started again. Go ahead and use our A3 with Green Warden. A1. Choice but to A1. Probably should have used the A2. That's, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. All right, we could strip off those that buff right there, or we could just leave it on and heal up. Go ahead and heal up. Let's put the decrease attack on again. Okay, let's get the block debuffs buff on. Got the HP burn and poison again. Is it gonna mess us up though is the question. All right, there we go. A3, gonna A2, let's go ahead and get the heal reduction on. Rip those buffs off. Hopefully brimstone, no. A1. And he's finally down. All right. So that's how the team works through the rotation. And you can see that even if the rotation messes up, it's okay. You can still function through it as long as you just keep on schedule, stay on rotation, get back into that rotation. You're good. So we got Raka here. Really nice. Block debuffs and a cleanse on two separate abilities. Sometimes they're on the same ability. You have to like cycle back through it. Okay, Arbiter right here, turn meter boost, heals, weaken, really good champion for this fight. Sathalia, one of the best for removing the buffs off. She has the HP burn. Ruark, one of the best tanks for the fight. He has my Brimstone, so he is crucial for damage as well, but he is one of the best tanks for the fight, 100%. Imic is very nice too. Scion over here is our heal reduction and our guy who throws on the dummy buffs, even though Arbiter can do the same exact thing. 
That's the rotation. That's how it works. Basically, the more damage you could add in there, the better. And, and if you could do, you know, more raw damage, even better. Someone like Rodos is very good, for example. We have bombs we didn't even bring into this fight. You could bring bombs. You could bring poisons. You could bring HP burn, brimstone, raw damage. Everything works against Amius. The, the main crucial parts about the rotation is block debuffs, remove buffs, heal reduction, dummy buff, decrease attack. And that's it. Once you got that, you're good to go. The beautiful part is it's almost all optional. Someone like Ukko keeps a decreased attack on the entire fight with the A1. Even better. So there's some champs that are better than others. Let's go ahead and go over the artifacts real fast, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, I want to go over the masteries and stuff real fast. We already went over the stats. Uh, the artifact sets really don't matter. There are a couple of artifact sets that can really help you out sometimes. Like Guardian set, for example, if you got somebody who's squishy taking the hit, uh, that can help you out. You got some stuff like that, masteries-wise. Let's go over to Green Warden Ruark and see what we're doing over here. Basically, defense and support tree, and you're going to see that theme through all of them. Not sure exactly on Arbiter here if she's been rebuilt for this, but uh, everybody else more or less is built for Amius. We got the Thalia here, off inside. Raka went down to Unshakable. I usually go for Eagle Eye if they're uh, some kind of a debuffer. If I can have enough accuracy without Eagle Eye, then I will go for Unshakable just about every time. Then we have Scion here. Same deal. If I need the accuracy, Eagle Eye. If I don't, Unshakable. Books-wise, Scion does not need to be booked up. I don't think so anyways. Raka, I don't think she needs to be booked up either. The Thalia obviously works without books. Arbiter probably does not need to be booked either, but probably better if she is. You're going to need her for the arena anyway, so you know might as well book her up. And then Green Warden, if you have him booked up, it's going to be a lot better, especially with the A2, that's for sure, because it comes back around pretty fast, uh, but there's also the, uh, the chance of using the A1 to transfer a decreased attack, that happens as well, so, you know, your mileage may vary there, but for the most part, you know, these guys don't need to be booked, Brimstone helps out a ton, the artifact sets don't matter that much, it's more or less the stats that matter the most, look for your stat thresholds here. You're going to be good. Last thing I'll say real quick before I take off is go ahead and check out the website. Go over there real fast. All right, on the website here, we're going to have some of these builds like the Eclipse Warden, Rampant Mad Capper, Blood Moon Shaman. We got the Lunar Conservator here. You can go to see all loadouts and go to loadout type and go Amius to Lunar Archon. Hit Champion Loadouts and boom, we got all the ones I've built so far here. We'll have a little bit more of the descriptions. Like I said before, and if you watched my previous video, we have a strategy description that's coming between the artifacts and the general. So some of the information has been taken out of here to add to the strategy section, where it basically tells you what to do and when. So you guys go ahead and check out the website. You guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. If you guys are having trouble with the Amius rotation, you guys make sure you get your stats up. That's really going to be the key to it all. Uh, learn what to do when, get the right champions. It's obviously the biggest problem and setback in the game is not having the right champions to do the stuff but as i showed you guys with many different champions before we had um king galcobar we had timid the fool we had sathalia you can even use seer for this fight right here to uh, remove the buffs and do a little extra damage there's so many different ways to do the same exact thing with amius uh, you have lots of options every rotation so let me end the, the video here real quick with a little bit of a sneak peek all right, you didn't hear this from me, but the next rotation might be Shadowkin, Bannerlords, Barbarians, Ogren Tribes, and Knights Revenant Faction. Shout out to the homies. You guys know who you are. You guys take it easy. Have a great day. Stay blessed. Peace.